This is Ramon Abbas, popularly known as Hush Puppy. He's a Nigerian influencer known for posting photos and videos of his expensive lifestyle on Instagram, where he has 2.5 million followers, and on Snapchat, where he had over 1 million subscribers. $40 million in cash, 13 luxury cars worth $6.8 million, 21 computers, 47 smartphones, and the addresses of nearly 2 million alleged victims. This was what was recovered by the Dubai police when he was arrested in June 2020. He was then taken to the United States of America by the FBI, where he remains. Court documents from the US, where he pleaded guilty to money laundering in April this year, revealed his involvement in a clandestine criminal operation that made the FBI tag him as one of the most high-profile money launderers in the world. His targets allegedly included a U.S. law firm, a foreign bank, and an English Premier League club. Well, Ramon Abbas is a high-level member of a transnational criminal enterprise out of West Africa that he and his group are responsible for millions and millions of dollars worth of fraud, uh, which is known within the FBI as the business email compromise but one of the things that was different about him is he flaunted all of his stuff he really kind of put it in everybody's face like hey look at me uh look what i've done look at my helicopters i'm flying in look at the lifestyle i have and that's one of the things that really caused his demise Hush Papi was born in Nigeria and raised in Oworoshoki, a low-income area in Lagos. Sometime around 2014, he moved to Malaysia and by 2017, he moved to Dubai. With a lifestyle funded by money obtained by fraudulent means, how big of a scammer was Abbas? His former lawyer, Gal Pizetsky, describes him as a middleman. When you look at the bottom line here, as far as what Ramon is uh, charged with or allege has allegedly done um, and to what he pled guilty to, um, you know, when you look at it specifically as to him, Ramon was not that big money launderer that uh, the newspapers or the government has made him to be, in my opinion. Um, he was more of maybe what I would call a middleman in, in some instances. I would say that most of these alleged schemes did not uh, come to fruition. Court documents revealed his crimes cost victims almost $24 million. They revealed a scheme to steal more than $1.1 million from a business person funding a children's school in Qatar and laundering of illicit funds in banks all over the world. In the early 2000s, when Hush Puppy was a young man, there was the explosion of internet cafes across Nigeria. Young people flocked to these cafes as a source of entertainment. Not too long after, reports of cybercrime started to emerge as young men in chat rooms illicitly obtained money from the friends they made. Cybercrime expert Dr. Adedeji Oyenuga has studied these men and their crimes. Cybercrime is evolving every time because um, when a particular technique is popular, uh, the law enforcement will be, try, will be trying to track down that particular technique and then they discard it and look for another. They always come up with newer techniques. For example, uh, when they realized that they could be tracked on their laptops, they came up with the idea of VPN. And when they realized that even some VPNs can be busted, they came up with the idea of buying logins from the dark web. One of the techniques Hush Puppy used to successfully obtain money from his victims was via business email compromise. This is what it is. So business email compromise is a type of scam that targets companies and organizations for financial gain or, or data theft. Cyber criminals, you know, they will typically compromise or, or, or spoof a legitimate email um, account and then send fraudulent emails um, to an addressee requesting transfer of funds or sensitive data. And they normally try and add some urgency to it as well. So, you know, they, they will put some other 
um, information in there to make you think, all right, this is urgent, I've got to act now. So it puts a bit of pressure on the person receiving that email. They'll also quite carefully craft some of these emails as well. So they, you know, they will be using things that they may have taken off social media about the person they've sent the email to. So they, they will seem quite legitimate. According to an FBI report released in 2020, over $1 billion was lost by victims of business email compromise. According to a lot of reports and according to cybersecurity ventures, the cybercrime problem globally has grown from a $3 trillion problem to a $6 trillion problem. This is from 2015. Now just think about how big that is and the problem is continues to get worse because a lot of the fraud going on is impacting senior citizens, it's impacting small businesses. I've seen church and nonprofit organizations destroyed by these enterprises. What we see specifically in Africa is, is a very steep upward curve over the last sort of five to 10 years of connectivity. Online crime has grown. It's very difficult for law enforcement to get a, a true perspective of the levels because the reporting of cybercrime is often very underreported or not reported as well. What we are seeing in Africa though, is we're seeing a greater take up of the sort of the mobile phone apps. So a lot of people in, in Nigeria, but also across Africa, aren't using banking apps to do their business and their money transfers. So what we are seeing is organized crime groups, organized crime networks and individuals. Um, they may have some skills, they may have some ability within being able to um, get into systems. Nigeria is listed by the FBI as the 16th worst country affected by cybercrime. In a recent research by cybersecurity company Agari, it found that 50% of all BEC attacks originate from Nigeria. Meanwhile, Hush Puppy is looking at a prison sentence of up to 20 years. He's due to appear in a Californian court in October. Law enforcement agencies hope that such high-profile arrests of Hush Puppy and his accomplices will deter other cyber criminals.